Hello everyone, it's Crystal. I hope everyone is having a good day today. Today is Sunday, January 31st, 2021. It's the last day of January already. Today, we're going to be working on a shaker card. I am going, going to go through the technique of making a shaker card. Um, there are several steps, and actually there are different ways to make a shaker card, but this is the technique I use. Um, it can be tweaked depending on how your brain works and how you think about different orders of operation. So, just want we're going to feature the sweet ice cream sh sweet from Stampin' Up. The, the sweet comes with stamp set, a punch, some ribbon, some designer series paper, and the sprinkles. The sprinkles are going to be the basis of our shaker card. So before I started the cards, I looked at the designer series paper because I am using the designer series paper in the shaker cards. So I will just want to share the paper with you once again. Previously, um, at the, the end of December 2020, the week after Christmas, I did a lead up to the January to June 2021 mini catalog, and I went through a lot of the, the new products in that catalog, and this was one of the suites that I featured. So this is designer series paper. It starts off 12 by 12 and it's double sided. These ice cream cones are one side and then we have the sprinkles. I use a lot of this paper for the sprinkles, but the ice cream cones, the soft ice cream cones are one side. The sprinkles are the opposite side. Here's what the opposite side looks like. So I have a, a lot of scraps left from the projects I've created. Then we have our popsicles. I have a few scraps I use. Popsicles are on one side. Then we have some stripes on the reverse. And then we have the ice cream scoops on one side. And then we have the cinnamon cider with the cross hatch. If you have the punch, the punch is, is a ice cream builder punch. If you use this part with the cone on this paper, you have your little waffle cone already, already made. So that's this paper, both sides. And we have have these blotches you could use you could use this part the scoop of the ice cream for some of these papers for this part of the paper the different splotches and you can get your ice cream scoop with that and this is the reverse these diagonal stripes you have same pattern in a different colorway but this side has polka dots And then finally, same color, different colorway, same design. And then we have some waves here. These go together. So a shaker card is a card, it has a few layers and then you place something small like sprinkles or sequins or beads inside the card and with, you shake the card, you'll hear a noise. So since I decided to use the designer series paper from the ice cream corner suite, this is the back of the package. And I looked at my coordinating colors. There's Bermuda Bay, Blackberry Bliss, Bumblebee, Cinnamon Cider, Old Olive, Petal Pink, Pool Party, Purple Posy, So Saffron, 
saw seafoam, terracotta tile, and whisper white. I decided to use Bermuda Bay ink in my projects. I cut some cardstock. This is cinnamon cider. I cut a bunch. I wasn't sure exactly how many cards I was going to do because I'm just, I'm going to teach the technique today and I'm going to put one card together so that you can see how the steps for the technique. But I wasn't sure how many cards I would put together beforehand. And this is basic black. So I'm gonna take out all, if you, just in case you haven't seen the stamp set, it's called Sweet Ice Cream. There are 18 stamps in the set. Happy birthday, thank you, treat yourself, you melt my heart, you're so cool, with sprinkles on top, hope it's sweet. Then you have your ice cream cone. This is distinctive stamping. This is your ice cream scoop. These are could be round sprinkles. These are different types of sprinkles. Then you have your popsicle stick. This could be melting ice cream. This could also be melting ice cream. This piece and this piece uh, con con constitute the popsicle. This is the bottom of the popsicle. This is the top of the popsicle. This is the ice cream cone. And these hatches go with th the ice cream cone. And this could be another popsicle stick. So they are photopolymer stamps. These are the size of the stamps. And I have some extras because whenever I start a project, I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to proceed and I always stamp extras, punch extras, etc. And since there's a coordinating punch, I have some of these labels printed so that when I use it in the future, I know that I should get the punch. So whatever projects I make in the future, I'll have the punch and the stamp set together. And these are just my extras. I will show you both cards. I always do an envelope. This is a Whisper White envelope. Whisper White is no longer available. You can get basic white medium envelopes. And I use the Bermuda Bay, the Bermuda Bay stamp pad for all of my ink. I always do the lower left hand corner and then I flip it. And then I do the left corner of the flap. So this is the first card I made. This is the cinnamon cider, five and a half by eight and a half. I scored it at four and a quarter. And I cut out some Bermuda Bay cardstock. I cut all the pieces four by five and a quarter. And then I took some of my dies and then I cut out a piece so that you can see through the holes so you can see the, the shaker parts. Here's the shaker parts. I also cut some designer series paper. That's optional, depending on what look you're going for for your shaker card. You don't necessarily need the designer series paper because once you cut this piece out of the Bermuda Bay, you see the cinnamon cider, but I wanted you to be able to see some design. And then this is Whisper White cardstock. I stamped Treat Yourself in Memento Tuxedo Black Ink. And then I use one of my dies to cut it out. On the inside of the card, this is Whisper White cardstock, four by five and a quarter. Happy birthday. And then are the sprinkles also in Bermuda Bay. My second card, similar, basic black, five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter. The same Bermuda Bay cardstock four by five and a quarter. I used a st stitched triangle to cut out this piece. I used the same designer series paper on the background. I didn't want you to see black. So I probably have a few too many sprinkles in here. They shake, but they don't really move around that much. 
Whisper White Cardstock, You Melt My Heart, and then I use my, my scallop circle punch that I have to cut out that piece. And the inside says thank you, and then there are the sprinkles again. Also in Bermuda Bay, four by five and a quarter for the Whisper White Cardstock. So I made both cards the same way, but what makes them, one thing that makes them different is the, the orientation. This is portrait, this is landscape, and also the die I use to cut out the, the, the shape. So I have, I'll show you what I, I cut out a few of them. And when I started, I took out a few of my dies. Just to cut out the shapes from the Bermuda Bay cardstock. So, and one of the benefits of doing the shaker cards is that once you cut out the shape from your cardstock, then you have these shapes left over. So I had triangles left over from here. And then this shape is from this die. That shape is from that die. Did that twice. And then this shape. So these shapes can be used later. So that's one of the benefits. For your shaker card just have to save these for later so just to let you know which this die came from the Pipple and friends die set i keep my dies on this magnet sheet this is Pipple and friends one five three five eight five it's in the believe it's in the annual catalog and it comes with these dies which can be used with any project and then there are dies that go along with the hippo and friends stamp set so that was one of the dies I used and this die right here this die comes from the Stitch So Sweetly dies, 151690. So I'll put that back there. And then the, and I save my extras. So this can go in my, my little plastic sleeve here. This die came from the Tasteful Labels dies, 152886. This is in the annual catalog for Stampin' Up. And this die set comes with 13 dies. And since I have extra, I'll save this in my sleeve as well. And my triangle, it's an equilateral triangle. It's from the Stitch Triangle Dies, 152710. This is also in the annual catalog. This is the second to largest equilateral triangle. The, the largest one was just too big, so it would have taken up too much space. And based on the way you have to put the card together, I just it would have been a little too tight. So I decided to use the second from largest. And then I could put my, my extra extra triangles in the sleeve. So you also need, so you need cardstock, you need some sort of shaker element, sprinkles, sequins, beads, etc. You also need some mylar. Stampin' Up! does not sell Mylar, but I got my Mylar from Amazon. 12 by 12 sheets. This is 24 sheets of Mylar. It's 4 mil thick. You can cut it with a regular paper trimmer. Um, you can 
If you have a scan and cut and you want to make templates, you can design your templates on your scan and cut or on Brother Canvas Workspace. I have a scan and cut. So I may make some make my own templates. Uh, stencils. Make my own stencils with this mylar. So I have 24 sheets, 12 by 12. I can use, do a lot of things, a lot of projects with that. You also need foam sheets, stamping up cells, foam adhesive sheets. I had some from Amazon that were already cut into different different strips. This just comes as one. You have to cut these into the size you need. And since I had the strips, I used them. But you can use these for your shaker card as well. You can make them any any width of a strip you want. So here are our parts. You take your card base. I'm going to do cinnamon cider again. I'm going to work. I usually work from the outside to the inside, but I'm going to. I mean, usually work on the inside first, but today I'm going to work on the outside. So I'm going to use the. I'm going to use the triangle because you have to. When you make a shaker card, you need to put. The foam strips, once you cut them, or if you have them that, that are already into strip form for you, you need to put them on the perimeter, all four sides of your shaker top. And then you also need to put the foam strips around the shape that you cut out. So I, this was originally my plan, but it was just a little too complicated. If you've never done a shaker card before, this card would discourage you. So <laughs> let me just keep it. Keep it straight, keep it tight, and just do. So if you've never done a shaker card before, my advice to you is that your first shaker card should be something with straight lines. You could probably do a circle or an oval, but something with all of these twists and turns, I would avoid that if you've never done one before because that could be frustrating. So after I cut out my shape, I, as you see, I've... I showed you I cut out a lot of different shapes then I measured I measured the space of my hole this so I decided for this particular this particular card I would do like three and three quarter inch square which is more than enough to cover the um the triangle so this is actually three and a quarters by three and a half because it was already three and a half and I didn't want to cut a new sheet, but it's big enough to cover the hole. Like I said, the designer series paper is optional. You don't need it. You can do your shaker card like this and then what, then whoever has your card, they'll see the cinnamon cider, but I wanted some visual interest. So you measure the hole and then that's how you decide how large of a piece of designer series paper or whatever kind of background you want to use so the size doesn't matter but you have to measure so that the, this will be completely covered then you take your designer series paper and place it on your card base and you take a pen i take a pen or a pencil this is where I'm going to probably put my designer series paper and this is probably where I'm going to put my my cardstock so I can just lift up my cardstock and I'll just mark it here so when I place it back down I'll put it in the right place just so this, this will be covered you won't see those marks and then I will adhere my DSP to the cardstock. Once again, the DSP is optional. You don't have to do this step. You don't have to use another sheet of paper. And then just place this right here. So 
So that's it for that right now. Then the Mylar, just for ease of the d demonstration, I made the Mylar the same size as the DSP. Just in terms of cutting, I just kept one number in my head, three and a quarter inch square. So that's what this is. So the, the easiest thing to do is to place your adhesive on your Mylar. Because you cut your mylar large enough that this adhesive will not show through. And then this is the back side of my, my die cutting. And then I take the mylar and I just place it over. So there's plenty of space. I was generous with the cutting. So the mylar is now covering the hole. This is the part of the card that's going to be face up. But this is the part of the card that's going to... Be adhered to your card base. So now we need the adhesive foam strips. This is the part that usually discourages people. So my strips are already cut. I had these from Amazon. As I said, they're four inches long. So I just take some. They're not that wide. I'm going to put them on the perimeter of my cardstock because you need a little space between the cardstock and the card base because your sprinkles need to have room to shake. So that's the first part. And then we also need the foam strips to surround the area of your shape. If you were doing glitter or something, your foam strips would need to touch. They would need to be flush so that you don't lose any glitter. These, these sprinkles are fairly big. I'm still going to have them touch, but I don't have to obsess over them touching exactly because with, with glitter, you would need to have your foam strips would definitely need to um, have no space so that you could so that you won't lose any any glitter. So just cut off that little piece and then I'll go to the bottom. Just take another strip. The good thing about these strips is that they're four inches, which is usually the size of the width of a standard A2 size card layer. You know, the card itself would be four and a quarter, and most layers would be four. So you, these strips would be the perfect size for you to make your card layers. And then finally, so whatever shape you use for your shaker card, you need to do this. I chose a, a triangle because that's a simple shape. But any, sh any shape can be done, but you just have to be mindful that in addition to the perimeter, you need to outline your shape. And if you have small shaker elements like glitter, it needs to be flush so that you don't lose any of your elements. All right. So that is it. So I'm going to put some shaker, some of my sprinkles on, on this, on my designer series paper. And then I'm going to remove covers from my foam strips. All right, that's better. So I have found that the the easiest way to put the sprinkles on the card is to open the sprinkles, pour some into the top 
because they do roll, they're round. Pour some into the top. And then pour what's in the top onto the paper. Because originally I tried to pour directly from the bottom into the paper and that was, that was a mess. So, so if you have these sprinkles, pour into the top and then pour from the top onto your paper. So just gather these in the middle. I think I have too many. Let me just take a few back. All right, that's a little better. So just gather them in the middle. And then we will remove the paper from the foam strip. These strips are double-sided adhesive. As the perimeter is done, and now I'll do my triangle. Use my take your pick tool and just stick it underneath the paper and then peel the paper away. So after that, line up your layer where you want it to be. And my layer is four by five and a quarter. So there's a one eighth inch border around between the, the Bermuda Bay card layer and the cinnamon cider card base. And there is the front of your shaker card. So there's a lot of steps, a lot of pieces, but if you do them in the order I just suggested you should not get frustrated and then the inside let's see I have some I have a thank you I think I'm gonna do you melt my heart again so I'm gonna put that put the thank you on the inside This layer is four by five and a quarter, and I do the perimeter and one of the diagonals. This is cardstock. And then just place this in my card base. So the inside is done. Bermuda Bay ink. And I'll take my bone, my bone folder after I. And you melt my heart. I'm gonna pop that up on dimensionals. You know what? I'm gonna do you're so cool. You're so cool here. I also I use the scallop circle punch to cut out that shape. And this was just a scrap piece of whisper white cardstock. Just one dimensional, that's fine. And it over here you're so cool and the card is done so the work for the card was the shaker elements and I'll go over that again one more time so once you get the elements down the shaker card would be a nice gift for someone so we have our card, our card base, which we do for all cards. We need, we need a layer, so it can be any size. I just decided to do four by five and a quarter, and then you cut out your shape. If you don't have a die cutting machine, you can use a punch, or you can just mark the shape with a ruler and a pencil, and you can use your trimmer, you can use your scissors. It can be any shape. The shape is not important. This technique is will work for any shape. Then you measure the, the size of your shape. 
and you, you have the option of putting some kind of designer series paper behind your shape just to give some more visual interest. So you measure your shape and cut out a piece of designer series paper that will cover the shape plus some. You don't want to be chintzy on the designer series paper. You want to make sure you have enough space. You don't want to, it's better to be too big than too small. Then once you cut your designer series paper, you will mark the area on your card base to where your designer series paper will be placed. Then you adhere your designer series paper to your card base. Then you take your Mylar template and you don't have to buy Mylar from Amazon. If you get a package and you know how the package comes in that hard plastic, that's what that is. It's, you can use that for your, you can save that from your packaging as long as it's stiff my mylar is uh four mils thick so just when you have a package you get a package and you have that hard plastic you can use that for your shaker cards just for ease of the demonstration and just for ease of my creativity i make my mylar the same size as my designer series paper then i put the adhesive on the mylar and then I adhere the Mylar to my layer. In this case, is the Bermuda Bay cardstock. Then I attach my foam strips. If you have the foam strips from Stampin' Up, you can cut this to any size you want, and you would adhere your foam strips to the perimeter of your layer and around your shape. If you have small, shaker elements like glitter, your foam strips that outline your shape, they need to be flush. You can have no space because then you'll lose your glitter. And then after you adhere the foam strips around the perimeter of your layer and the perimeter of your shape, then make sure you have your shaker elements on your card base and then you adhere your layer to your card base and you're done. So it's a lot of steps, but it's not difficult. If you do them in that order, and you will not have, you should not have any problems. I went over the order twice. I did it as, I went over the order as I went through the, this card, the You're So Cool card. And I just went over them in the exact order as I did them. And I did two cards before, the, before this video to make sure I had the order in my mind, the way my mind works. So if you have another way, or if you know of any other ways to make shaker cards, feel, feel free to let me know. I like this technique. I hope it helps you. Thank you for watching. If you do decide to make a shaker card using my technique or another technique, sh uh, share the pictures with me. If you are on Instagram, Share them on Instagram and just tag me, Interwoven Creations by Crystal, and, to, and tag me in the photo so I can see what you've made. Thank you for watching. Continue to enjoy your Sunday afternoon, and happy crafting.